Hi everyone, this is Fran Asaro from Thrive Anyway, and welcome. This, tonight we're going to do our Leaders Making a Difference in the, world, in the World interview. And I'm very excited that my uh, guest tonight is somebody that I know personally for at least nine or ten years now. Right, Deborah? And yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm very excited that I get to share her with you because she is an amazing woman. So Deborah Gennard is a best-selling author, speaker, and intuitive spiritual healing practitioner with a master's in divinity, in spiritual healing, and counseling. Through her latest book and accompanying course, Bridging the Gaps, a journey to the center of yourself, she guides women to access and embody their sacred feminine essence and hold the energy of the true feminine that is needed for healing the humanity and the planet, for healing humanity and the planet. Now this is a must for women, especially now as we're going through the coronavirus pandemic and into the new way of life that we're being led or called to live. Make no mistakes, we cannot go back to business as usual. So I just want to start off by saying that I recently did Deborah's course. I took the course and it was life-changing, transformational. And uh, I hope everybody here looks into this course to see if it's a good fit for you because it was, it just, it did everything it says it's gonna do about bridging the gaps. It was flawless in the steps that you gave. I just have to say that because, and I'll probably say it more because it was a really fantastic course. It's not the only teaching I had been through with Deborah, but it was the most recent, so I'm very, I'm still very excited about it. And so, as she speaks tonight, we'll, we might delve into it a little bit more. So, uh, Deborah, I just want to start just a little bit. Um, right now, what are you thinking about the current pandemic? Well, Fran, you know, I have uh, mixed feelings about it, honestly, because, you know, while it's shocking and horrific and just kind of like, um, you know, in a lot of ways, hard to believe that we're going through this right now on such a mass scale, global scale. At the same time, it's not at all surprising. And it's not, you know, it, it's actually, and I say this, not not to downplay any of the pain that so many people are going through, but it's almost gives some hope because, you know, as a um, a world, I do, I am a firm believer in climate change, and I am a firm believer that we were like just heading into disaster, and having a lot of talk about the things we need to do to change, but not really acting fast enough. So this really put us into a position where we don't have a choice, you know, and as we've had to dial it back, way back, and stay put, I mean, we're already seeing, you know, some clear skies come in, in places where the sky hasn't been cleared for a long time, birds coming into places they haven't been for a long time, fish coming into places they haven't been in, you know, waters they haven't been in a long time, and you know we're we're seeing a lot of positive signs in the earth saying oh finally humanity you know i just like it's kind of like earth just gave us a message and said all right look guys you guys have been enough talk already i i'm i'm speaking up and putting it out there you're not going to have a choice and the earth is already beginning to recover you know and that's why i say we cannot go back to business as usual from here. We've got to take this cue, listen to the message from our Mother Earth and take this cue and look at, okay, how do we move forward from here into a life that will be and it, that is sustainable for our planet and for us as a species on this planet? Yeah, you know, it's so true. You know, you are not the only person to say this could be an opportunity for us and they weren't surprised and they're not they again we are all compassionate to what's happening but that it is happening possibly for an opportunity to reset mm -hmm. and if that's the case we have to look at the, there's possibly a gift and in most cases there's a gift and in some sort of tragedy too whether it shifts the economy or or, or the world the environment mm -hmm. the the earth so 
I do appreciate that. Um, where do you think we're headed and what are we being rebirthed into? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a rebirth because, you know, we have been, uh, as a humanity, I'm going to give it from a spiritual perspective, if I may. Sure. All right. You know, I, I'm sure your listeners have heard about, like, you know, coming into planet Earth and going on the hero's journey or the her heroine's journey, right? Where we, uh, I'll give it in my, in my language, and I, I think people can follow along. You know, we come into this planet. If you believe that we're spiritual beings coming into physical bodies and, uh, you know, to have this life experience, you know, you can call it a... It, a, a journey for the evolution of the soul. I believe it's integrated spirit, body, earth experience that we're having to give us what we need to do for the evolution of our soul that we need to learn or to um, uh, fulfill, right? We know coming in to this planet, we know our connection with all that is. We know ourselves as these beings of light. We know ourselves, like we know why we're here. We know what we're here to learn. We know what we're here to 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 do and to fulfill but because we are human beings and we do come here with free will we have to forget that connection with all that is and we have to forget all of that information that we know coming in in order to actually realistically play it out and learn what we're here to learn right we've got to experience it from a place of not knowing before we can evolve into a higher level of knowing Right. And so we have to come in in a state of being a presence that is fully connected as beings of light. But we have to separate from that. We have to separate from ourselves. And in that separating, we forget who we are and what we are and why we're here. And we perceive ourselves. We're never really separate, but we perceive ourselves as separate. Until that pain of separation gets too intense and too strong and too painful for us, or some awakening happens, and we realize, oh my gosh, is something more, and I've got to get back to that, right? And then we start making our journey home. That's our, our healing, healing journey of the human experience. And that's the, the return, the remembering, right? So... You know, we are, if you look at the whole of our humanity, because what is, you know, I believe that everything that we experience on our individual levels is mirrored on the greater, on the collective. So if you look at the whole of humanity and where humanity has been, you know, I, I, I and I'm not going to claim to know the whole of the history, be able to recite the history as I know some people can. But you know, at the time we have been matriarchal and we have for many years in the patriarchal society, the, we're now making our way back. And a lot of people have been rising up and saying, okay, you know, we've got to get the, the feminine back and we've got, you know, all of this. But we don't want to shift from patriarchy back to matriarchy. We want to a place of whole and completion, right? And a place of integration. So um, it's been way out of balance. We have been in the state of separation, right? That patriarchy. And we want to come back now to a place of wholeness, of integration. This, with everything that we've been going through over the last few years, from the, you know, the Me Too movement, where, you know, we started to speak up and say, hey, wait a minute, this is not right. This, what has been happening in our world is not right. We've had years and years of climate scientists standing up and saying, you know, hey, this is not right. We've had the animal rights movement standing up and saying, hey, the treatment of animals in this world is not right. We've had just, you know, all of these things, humanity, animals, planet, all at the same time saying, wait, this is not right. Exactly. We have been in such a state of separation and conflict 
have you've got it's it's what has been happening over these last couple of years and now with this coronavirus pandemic has been really highlighting for us just how off we've been and this coronavirus gives us an opportunity to do some introspection and to really look inside of ourselves and say, wait a minute, what is most important here? You know, we have this on a collective, we can see just how detrimental our financial inequality is and, you know, the, the situation it's left people in. I, I, I know everybody is hurting you know, with individuals losing their jobs, and we'll say everybody, but most people are hurting. The entire economy is hurting. Individuals losing their jobs. Companies, large companies that stay open and are needing a bailout. Stock markets crashing. You know, even people who are retirement, who have had money is dependent on the stock, it are hurting. It's hitting everyone on all levels. And it's not discriminating. So, you know, it's, we're really getting to see just how broken our systems are. We're also getting able, we're, we're able to see just what really is important on the day to day in terms of, you know, who's really, we're, who we're being most dependent on at these times. Yeah. And, you know, so um, it's an opportunity to, to rethink a lot of that and to look at how we want to restructure our lives going forward. Mm, that's, that's amazing. The, the uh, conversation about a free will and predestiny, that's a great way to explain it because I myself have always wondered, what is it? What, what do I choose? And the way you say that we were put here to have the free will and have to forget everything. And now we're, I guess we're all going to be remembering, or many of us are going to be remembering at the same time because of what's happening. It's sort of like a, a jolt for all of us. And so um, you were mentioning about the Me Too and everything. How are you, um, uh, what is the role of sacred feminine in this process? Yeah, because, so when you think about the, the archetype of the feminine, you know, the feminine is that state of being. It is the container, right? It is the, it's, it's, and the, the archetype of the masculine is the moving out and the doing, right? This is the, the container and the being and the masculine, the moving out and the doing. So when we look at the, uh, the, the journey of the collective of humanity, and we've been in this state, a very much a state of doing, we've been in very much a state of thinking, of look at what is revered in this country. And in this world, really, look at what is revered. What is revered is the accomplishment, the doing, the thinking, the mental, right? What we need in order for healing is the state of being. The, each one of us on a, on a daily basis and on an individual basis, it's like, you know, we go back and forth between that masculine side, feminine side, many times a day. And, you know, when we're out of balance, when we do meditation and we go into that state of just being and being in connection with source and receiving that beautiful energy that I, I don't know about you, but when I go into meditation is receiving the beautiful nourishing energy that can, you know, just come in and flood through my body and awaken that that is inside of me already and bring that into, uh, you know, in, so that I can feel it and experience it and just kind of float in that ocean, right? Mm -hmm. and, and land in that ocean of this divine sacred energy. This is that state that each one of us, this is why meditation is so important. We spend so much time going out and doing and accomplishing and, you know, and tasks and thinking and all of this to be able to come back and rest in that state of being that's like going out from the masculine coming home to the feminine and replenishing nourishing ourselves and returning to the truth of ourselves the state of being 
you know, that is what gives us nourishment and replenishes us so that we can go out again, right, and do the things we need to do. And then we've got to continually come back. On a larger, broader scale, the humanity has been in the state of going out and doing in order to heal. The collective of humanity needs to come back to that state of being, to be replenished, to be nourished. This is where we really get our true wisdom and reconnect with our inner knowing, right? This is where all of that comes in. And as a whole of humanity, this is I, the, the, why I'm so passionate about the Bridging the Gaps program, because it really does help us as uh, women, especially, I mean, this program is for women. It helps us to really connect inside of our, ourselves and through our portals and, you know, our, our energy centers, our, inner, our energy portals into that state of being where, you know, we can connect with our core and really plug into the, the sacred feminine energy, the portal of the, of the womb, you know, and, and land in the pelvic space. This is, is, you know, Fran, I call this a state of I be, the, the center of I believe. The heart is the center of I know. And the womb is the center of I am. It is that state of being that is so powerful. And it's the, it is that energy that we need to bring up from inside of ourselves to hold that state of being for the whole humanity to make its return back to that state of being so that we can have integration, we can have nourishment, we can have replenishment, we can return to the state of knowing, not to the state of trying to figure it out from here because here doesn't have the answers. The mind has never had the answers. The mind is kind of, it's what helps us figure it out when we're not connected here. The mind can be in service to the knowledge of the heart and when the mind is in service to the knowledge of the heart, it can actually, you know, produce some beautiful things. Not saying that the mind has produced, but everything the mind has produced is, is not beautiful. But when it's in service to the heart, it, it's serving the greater good. It's serving the highest wisdom. And when we hold this space of being and hold that energy of the sacred feminine, the sacred feminine in of my beliefs about it, my experience with it, my teachings of it is not just about women coming together for a sisterhood to boost each other up and help each other heal from the past. That's part of it. But honestly, we've got to learn how to use our energy to plug in and travel through these por portals and emerge from within ourselves this state of being so that we're holding the space for the whole of our humanity to make its return and its healing into this place of knowledge and wisdom so that we can right our entire planet and move forward from here in a way that is sustainable for the planet and for the um, uh, furtherance of the human race. Otherwise, we're just headed for extinction. And if we don't heed the, the call and listen to the messages and learn from the messages of this pandemic, I honestly believe that the next one will not, will be even harder. I'm not going to say this one is merciful, but I think the next one will not be as merciful. I think it will be a harder crash. We cannot keep going in the way that we've been going. You know, you're talking about uh, the doing versus the being. You know, it really it is only about creating balance and becoming a yin yang within ourselves. Okay? I guess what people are used to hearing is to, to being complete, whole and complete within ourselves, and then being able to be whole and complete in the universe and create balance for. The, the world. So that's really fantastic. Now, I know, I know what you do for the world. And, uh, but I would like it, everybody else to hear because you and I were on a call last week. I know you're doing a lot of work right now to be of service during this time, but mm -hmm. please share with the world how you are helping people, especially women through this right now, through this time. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I was, when all of this hit, I was getting ready to enroll for the next program of the Bridging the Gaps. And I was just like, oh, I really is like, I felt more right to just pull back and listen for a while and see, okay, what's really going on here? On the one hand, you know, it was like, where are people going to land with this? I don't know where, you know, people are going to land. 
in terms of their time with kids being home or financially or anything else. Just So I, I just decided to pull back and listen for a little while. And in doing that, I've had several people come to me and say, hey, what about the program? Are you going to do the program? So I probably will do it in a couple of weeks from now. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put something out. I'll do it. And, you know, it. I want to offer it because this is the time that that program is made for. Yes. That program is saying, okay, women, let's, I didn't realize it was going to hit with a pandemic like this so quickly, but this is exactly what it is, it is designed for, to say, let's find that energy within ourselves. Let's plug into those portals, like the, you know, access that energy that we can bring forward in order to hold the space for the healing of our humanity. That's it. Yeah. That's what the program is for. So, um, you know, ideally, I'll, I, I want to use this time to offer this to as many people as possible so that we can, more and more and more of us can hold the space for ourselves, for our own personal healing, for our own way of being in the planet, for our families, for our communities, for, you know, everything, so that we can eventually tip that scale and have enough of us holding that space so that we can have the, the healing we need at this time. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, in terms, I guess your, your question was, was, what are we, what am I doing? Um, to help people and you know that that's really for me personally the I guess that's the biggest thing you know I've also been involved with the climate healers group as a volunteer doing work with that group and they're looking from a systems perspective you know more on the masculine level from a, a systems perspective of what are the things we need to put in place in order for our um, uh, you know, to like build a system that we can operate within that is different from the system we've been in so that we don't go backwards, mm -hmm. right? So on that level, I'm, I'm helping with that as well and doing some uh, beautiful work with some wonderful people to, um, to like, you know, help us with developing a system that can carry us forward in a way that honors all, all life and is sustainable for humanity and the planet. Mm -hmm. So kind of got both things going on there um and if people want to plug into either one of those i'd be happy to help them plug in you know on the doing side or on really learning how to hold the space for the being both are equally important and both are necessary and i want to highlight that because we have been a society that has valued the patriarchal state of doing and systems and blah 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 right that's important it's very important and we need both they're equally important. Yeah. So, you know, think about that. Where do you plug in? Where, do, where are you called to plug in? Yeah. And I'll be happy to help people plug in. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciate those two very powerful things that you're involved in to help people, but I know you're being way too modest and that you've got more going on than you can shake a stick at. So what I'm going to say is uh, I'm going to have to pull it out of you, but all the things that you do, I would love a link for every single one of them, and I'll post it with this video, because you are involved with many more things than that. And I want people to know everything you do. So, like you said, what calls to you, they may be called to something else that you do, some of the other things that you do. So, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll get that from you later. And, and just before we wrap up a little bit, and thank you so much. You've been so generous with your sharing and contribution. Uh, do you have any last words or anything that you want to say to our listeners? So I do have something and it might sound a little harsh. And I think it's okay to say it. I think, it, you know what, I'm going to say it because now's the time. I think that, I mean, for me personally, if I'll say that I've had like, you know, one thing that I maybe regret is that I have not been more outspoken. I've been a little too polite along the way. And here we are. So it's, you know, for all of us, we need to stop just trying to sugarcoat and be nice. <laughs> and I don't mean that we can be impolite and blaming with each other or hurtful to each other. But, you know, in the way that we have been living with our planet, I did one of the things, Fran, I think that you're talking about that I do is I do a Sunday morning prayer and healing circle. And it, that is completely free. You don't even have to sign up for anything. You can just come attend. You can listen by internet or by phone. And, um, and it's a healing. And a 
weeks ago, I did one called, Are We Sex Trafficking Our Planet? And, you know, I know some people said, ooh, but look at what we are doing. Look at what we're learning since the Me Too movement and the uprising of that, right? We're, it's really bringing forward what the sex, sex trafficking trade is. It is seeing people as non-human, as objects, as commodities. It is just stripping them of their humanity and selling them for profit and the consumer on the consumer side consuming them for pleasure for comfort for power or status or whatever that may be using human beings like that and when you look at that we have been doing that with human beings we've been doing that with animals and all of our zoonotic diseases all of the things that have been the the epidemics and pandemics have come from our treatment of animals and eating animals. And, you know, granted, I, will, I do not eat animal products or wear animal products, and I, have, I, I, I feel passionate about that. I think that's one of the things that has got to change as we're moving forward. We have got to leave those ways behind. Our treatment of animals has been horrific, and we've got to stop. We... Um, I mean, it just for so many reasons, for climate health, for animal wellness, for human health, that has got to change. So, you know, it, and, and I mean, everything from the, the way we're, it's like slavery, slave labor, the way we've treated animals, the way we've treated the planet in general. And um, like all of this really has that same thing. We use the planet in the same way. The planet is a living breathing being it is alive it is alive and it is nature and we are a part of nature we are we we live and breathe we share water we share air we share the the elements of the earth right we have all of that within us and we need to live and breathe in harmony with our planet to honestly i mean i think it's pretty easy to condemn slavery and to condemn sex trafficking and really to, to condemn one of them is to condemn all of them because we have been using our planet as if it is an object that we can strip and that we can take from and that we can sell off we can own it and sell off parts of it for profit and we can strip it and sell it as commodities and consume for pleasure for comfort for power and status and 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 profit you know and we've got to stop like just break that glass that we have been living in and think differently and be differently in order to move forward with health and with harmony we've got to do that right it's not just about uh you want to leave a better place for your children it's what about now it's not even the future it's the present don't we want to live in a better environment don't we take care of our bodies better than that shouldn't we take care of our, our home better than that so yes. that's wonderful um this is, so i'm glad you uh said something about your sunday uh event too and uh, again we'll put that in there deborah this has been wonderful and i love that you're out here sharing this with the world and making a difference and it's so like you said, this is something you've been ready for and preparing for for years and preparing the world for. And unfortunately, it had to come to this before many people are opening their eyes and now listening. So I wanted to make sure that you got heard during this time. And I thank you so much. So I'm going to end this by saying if you're interested in finding out what Deborah does besides the links below, you can go to joyfullylivingwellness.com. Is that correct? Yes, and that is contact correct. Contact Deborah and see everything that she has to offer. And uh, thank you for being here. And I'd love to have you back again with maybe some more about what you're doing. And, uh, and I'll be seeing you soon. So this is Fran Asaro from Thrive Anyway. And uh, you have a good day.